Hey, I'm going to take one more pass at your uh, your sliding out effect. Um, I see you're right. I was looking at the wrong stick. I got a little confused there. I, I wish I could uh, chalk it up to mode one versus mode two, uh, as you suggest. That's, that's very generous of you. But uh, no, I just I just was looking at the wrong thing. So I apologize for that. Um, let's take another quick look. And I've got the traces pulled up uh, as I normally do with... No, 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 I don't want it that way. No, 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 hang on. Oh, I thought I had it right, but I had them, I had them turned around. Hold on. Okay, so now I've got them set up like I usually prefer to have them set up with RC Command and Gyro on top and the PID on the bottom. And let's just take one more look through this turn and try and do a little bit better analysis. I think I st I'm still going to stand by my conclusion that the, the sliding out has to do with the with the motor mounts, the tilted motor mounts, but... I do want to make sure that my actual analysis of the PIDs is correct, so I'm not steering people wrong. So let's watch the turn again. And there's that moment where the front end uh, sort of slides out. And we will now correctly assess what's going on with RC command. So RC command is pushing to the right during the whole move until about this moment. Let's see where that corresponds. And here's where the gyro also goes positive. So RC command and gyro are both negative, indicating the right turn is occurring. And then now you're, you're turning to the right more slowly. And the stick is returning to center, so that's all normal. The stick centers about here. Where does it go zero? Here's where the stick centered. And gyro crosses the line about here. So that's not too bad. The stick centers here, commanding zero angular rate. The gyro achieves zero angular rate about here. And then the gyro begins going back the other direction. And that's that sort of undesirable thing. And then I'm guessing that you correct that. Yeah. So now you're sliding to the left. The nose is sliding to the left while the gyro is above the line, and about here is where you correct that with the stick. So this is a pretty classic example of a, of, of a tuning problem on the yaw channel, um, <clears throat> the yaw axis. If we look at what's going on with the PID, first thing we see is that D is not really doing anything. You have very low yaw gain, uh, D gain on the yaw axis, so we can pretty much ignore D for, for now. If we look here, we can see the P term pushes you into the turn. The I term is pushing you into the term as well. Turn as well. The P term and the I term agree, and they both go the same direction, which means that the P term is not pushing hard enough to achieve the desired angular rate fast enough, and it is leaving error behind. If the P term and the I term oppose each other, it means the P term is pushing too hard and the I term is opposing it. It's, it's the P term is pushing, you've got excess error, you've got error in the direction of pushing too much uh, versus error in the direction of pushing not enough. So because the I term and the P term go the same direction, they both are negative below the axis, that indicates that the P term may not be pushing hard enough and that if we were to increase P gain, we would expect to see, to, to a point, as I've said before, if we increase P gain, we would expect to see less I term accruing because the P term would do a better job of, of achieving the targeted angular rate. At this point, the P term begins descending. That means our error is, is reducing as well. And when P achieves, uh, when P reaches the axis and is, is at zero, that means there is zero error and we have exactly the targeted angular rate. But we've got all this accrued error in the I term that will take a while to unwind. We continue. Now P is opposing and trying to slow down the turn. We are turning too fast. While that's happening, the I term is unwinding. P is still trying to slow down because now you notice that we are turning to the right, which is negative below the axis, and P is above the axis. So that's telling us that right now we're turning too fast, it means we're basically the rear end of the copter is sliding out. 
Here's the point where the I term crosses the axis, and now I term is agreeing with P. And if we also add the PID sum to this trace, we can see the overall effect. PID sum crosses the axis here. So one thing we can see is that the I term is not delaying where the, well, I mean, it is delaying. The, the PID sum crosses the axis here. The I term and the P crosses the axis here. So the difference there is the I term pulling the PID sum down. Here's the moment where they all agree, but PID sum goes, uh, goes positive here. And the gyro doesn't cross until here. So all of the PID sum on y'all goes positive here, which means that now the PID algorithm is actually commanding right yaw or, or left yaw. It's interesting to me that the gyro takes so long to respond. Here is the moment where the, the, the copter, the motors actually begin outputting uh, right yaw. I'm sorry left y'all, we're turning right. We go positive, so that's that's left. But the copter doesn't actually, the gyro doesn't actually go positive until here. So there's a substantial uh, delay between the output of the PID loop and the gyro. Which means that the yaw, so all of this is pointing to a undertuned yaw axis, I think. Uh, and, and I say that for a couple reasons. One is that we see here, as previously discussed, that P is failing to achieve the targeted angular rate. If P was excessive, perhaps we would overshoot and we would see P and I oppose each other. Uh, but we don't see that. We see P undershooting and I, P and I are together. So P is failing to achieve the targeted angular rate. When P goes positive, P takes a long time to sort of accrue error. And meanwhile, we don't see the I term returning to zero. If the P term is large enough, when the P term switches signs, we will quickly see the error that was accumulated in the I term reduce, and the I term will quickly approach zero or cross the axis. So there's an interaction, as I've said before, between the P term and the I term. And then here we can see that the amount of time it takes between the PID sum crossing the axis and the gyro crossing the axis is pretty substantial, which means from the moment the PID, the PID algorithm takes a while to make up its mind, hey, we need to change directions here. But even after the moment where it finally says, hey, we need to change directions here, we see that it still takes a while before that actually begins to occur. So I think what we've got here is an undertuned yaw axis and the first place I would start let's say I think if my memory is correct you had yaw p at around 1.5 uh, and I if that's the case then I would say double it double yaw p and see what happens um, so I did I did want to go back and do a little bit deeper analysis of this just because I feel like this kind of you know so often we're just kind of looking at general tuning and saying oh maybe a little bit more p or a little less you know but here we had a very specific problem, and I feel like it's a very common problem on the yaw axis to see this kind of sort of sliding around uh, like we see here. And, uh, and so I felt like it could be really enlightening to dive a little deeper into what's going on. So, all right, well, there we go. I uh, hope that was helpful, and happy flying. Bye-bye.